Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Solving the Content Crunch, How Traveler Photos Can Drive Bookings and Engagement. The session is being presented by Olapic. Um, please join me in welcoming Adam Gerstel, the Travel Account Lead, and Andrew Gonzalez, the Director of Solutions, to the stage. How's everyone doing today? Nice lunch. Cool. Andrew and I figured we'd stand so we can digest a little bit, and make it a bit more interactive. So hope that's okay with you guys. Hello. Yeah. There, there we go. goes. So apologies better. if we like pace around up here, walking <laughs> off lunch. Um, all right. So we're Olapic. We're a tech startup, um, about a five, five or six-year-old tech startup, not, not that small anymore. Uh, we pioneered um, what we called visual commerce probably about four years ago, um, which, uh, which basically took our technology, uh, something that we call the earned content engine, uh, and harnessed user-generated content, or earned content as we call it, in-house. In um, to help brands and retailers sell stuff in an e-commerce context online. Um, over the years, that approach kind of evolved as we realized there were more like constituents in a marketing organization that needed content. Uh, we realized we were solving something that we call the content crunch, which is kind of this two-pronged problem. Uh, problem one is volume. Uh, so as you, you, know, you guys are well aware, you guys may be a lot of marketers in the room, uh, there are a lot more channels for you to push content into these days, and sort of your traditional methods of producing it um, professionally are sort of slow and expensive, not really keeping up. Uh, we had this tap into an abundant source of content that was already being created, and the second part of that problem of the content crunch is like a perception problem. So as, uh, you know, as the consumer gets more savvy, gets more sophisticated, uh, as the sort of buying demographic becomes the millennial, um, which I, I barely made the cut, 30 years old, but barely a millennial, um, they expect more out of brands. So they expect more authentic content, they expect you to talk to them where they are. They expect you to look like them and sound like them. And so our earned content platform um, helps solve both of those problems of the content crunch. Um, I'm not an expert in travel. I've, I run our solutions team, which basically means I've been at the company for a really long time and I've done a lot of stuff. So I come and like talk to rooms like this about how it works. Uh, Adam heads up all of our sales uh, for travel, you, you know, our lead sort of travel strategist. Um, so he's going to kind of educate me today on how we're servicing and how we've been servicing the travel vertical for the past couple of years. Uh, we know that you guys have probably been pitched to all day, so we're going to hopefully make it less of a pitch and more of like a conversation between us. Uh, there will be questions at the end, uh, but Adam's going to do most of the talking, and this is kind of what we're going to talk about in the next 35, more like 25 minutes. Um, and Adam wanted to start this out with like a quote about the traveler's purchase journey, booking mm -hmm. journey. It didn't make much sense to me that it's, it's not linear anymore. Um, so I asked him to explain it to me, and, and this is kind of yeah. where, where, where it started. I appreciate the, uh, the platform there, Andrew, to kind of take the lead. Uh, and again, thank you all for joining us and for coming to Focus Right. Um, I appreciate everyone's time this afternoon. Um, so the traveler journey, right, it's, it's not linear. And I think that's a pretty straightforward point, right? It's not sort of an A to Z approach. I think, you know, as the market evolves and travel begins to market to mobile and millennial audiences who immerse themselves in applications and new waves of, of sort of mediums to interact and book a trip, right? There's things like Hotel Tonight where you can book last minute. You know, gone are sort of the days where you call ahead and ask for a, a shorter check-in time or a check-in time at 11 o'clock or noon. You do that all through a mobile app. And I think what we have found is that those applications are being sort of, you know, they're proven at every step along the journey, right? You know, when, the, when it's just an idea, right, there's applications there that influence the sale all the way through the post-booking. There's been new applications and new waves for, for sort of travelers to immerse themselves in and sort of find a new path towards a conversion or booking a trip, right? So, 
the, the, the marketplace has really changed in the sense of it's not linear anymore. There's, there's tons of options. It's become sort of a winding road for the traveler, right, in terms of where they book a trip, how they do so, uh, and sort of what medium they're, they're sort of interacting with. Right, and when we were looking at this slide prepping for this presentation, there's like a lot going on. And I admittedly, I don't book that much travel unless it's for business travel and it's like super last minute. My wife books most of our like vacation travel. Um, and what I understood is that like the booking funnel is now like distributed. It's not like shopping for like this shirt from, from like Brooks Brothers. I don't just go and find the shirt and like move down a couple pages and then sure. buy. There's like, like you said, apps like Hotel Tonight, which you know, my wife uses and uh, OTAs like Kayak. A lot of things getting in the mix, right? Yeah, exactly right. New applications, new brands to make things easier, to consolidate things, to help you understand pricing or perhaps discounts or incentives to go ahead and book a trip somewhere else than you normally would, right? So it's really become sort of that, that winding road. Okay, very cool. So that's like part of the, the channel side of the content right. crunch, right? A lot of places to put content, mm -hmm. needs to be consistent message. Um, so tell me sort of about how the content crunch impacts travel and, and kind of what we're talking about here today, right? Yeah, so this is probably one of my favorite slides that we, um, we lean on here at Olapic. It really sort of visually shows the shift in what's happened, right? The move from what we call a text-based web environment to now what we're seeing in terms of kind of a more visually-based web environment, right? With the rise of the iPhone and social media, we've all sort of become a professional photographer overnight, right? Not only sharing our experiences with products, but sharing our experiences with actual moments. And what we see here is obviously a pretty important event at the Vatican. Um, and in just sort of a short period of time, you've seen a, a sort of a cultural shift in the way the, the moment is consumed by the traveler, right? Everyone has a tablet or a mobile phone in their hand. They want to capture the experience. They want to share with their friends and family across social networks and other mediums that they were there, they captured the moment. I always relate this back to myself. I'm a, I'm a 25 year old, I live in Manhattan, so I'm a big Yankee fan, of course. Um, and I was at Mariano Rivera's last game, and during his last close, I, was, I sort of stopped for a minute and looked around, and I noticed this exact thing was happening, and nobody was really you know, living the moment, right? They were capturing it instead of living it, and it's really been sort of an amazing thing to watch, an amazing, amazing thing to see, sort of that shift in the way um, travelers and consumers are, are really sort of visualizing and seeing that moment. Yeah, so you said, you said moment like a bunch of times there, right? Yeah, well. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're capturing yeah. the moment. Um, Experience yeah, moment. Yeah, what they say about, that's exactly right, what they say about millennial buyers is that we're, we're experienced consumers. We're like buying less stuff. I still buy a lot of stuff, but they tell me that I'm more of an experienced guy. And it's about moments, and, and travel is, is a lot about moments, right? Like on my honeymoon, took a lot of photos, captured a lot of moments, and we actually have some stats here that show that it's like, you know, almost three quarters of people are posting while they're on vacation, over three quarters of people are posting when they're back. So again, we've talked about the need, there's like this demand for it, Sure. all these channels, all these places to put it, and people are creating it. Yeah, exactly right. right. And it's not only, you know, before the trip, right? Like you see those countdowns on Facebook where it says 18 days till Cancun, cannot wait to go with my family. But they're also coming back and writing real relevant reviews, not only text reviews on TripAdvisor and, and sort of the, the common mediums that they operate on, but they're sharing and showcasing the moments that they enjoy with friends and families across social networks and in their, their own sort of medium. So there's really been a shift in kind of the way consumers come. Okay. Um, and so that's supply now, like demand, consumption. Yeah. Right? Does and it work? Of course. <laughs> that's why we're on stage, right? Yeah. Um, so I think it really creates that emotional connection, right? I think one stat that we always preach at Olapic is that the average consumer or traveler consults over 40 different sites before, of course, finding a good enough price, right? But finding enough inspirational or, or, or authentic content to feel comfortable enough booking that trip with you or pressing that buy button, right? So what we have found is that consumer content or user photos resonate with the traveler deeper, right? They feel more authentic when they're interacting with it, they touch it more, they feel sort of compelled to explore that content more deeply rather than sort of that stock imagery that we promote across site. Cool, and, and this is the ominous Olapic mountain range of the content crunch. Yeah, and right? this is, Sorry, cut you off. Tell me about it. So it's like demand on one side, 
yeah. What so, people are doing on social on the other side is organic creation. And then in the middle, the tiny little mountain is like brands' ability to, to create their own content, right? Yeah, and also a pretty powerful slide, right? I think with the mobile phone, right, the mobile and millennials are spending over 50% of their time in their phones on a social network looking and immersing themselves in, themselves in content that they love and want to you know, see, right? So there's a demand for more authentic content, more sort of content that resonates with that traveler. The problem is, in terms of lifestyle assets that you and your team create, you can't keep up with it, right? The cost is really expensive. It costs an arm or a leg to create. You get, can't get it fast enough, and you don't know if it's going to resonate with that customer or with that audience. So Olapix sees ourselves as sort of the way to bridge the gap between what your customer is demanding from a content perspective and what you and your team are able to create. We sort of see ourselves as sort of capturing that or organic creation and allowing you and your team to tap into that and utilize that as a, a marketing asset. That's cool. So, this slide, just in case there are any skeptics out there, this one kind of shocked me. There's all, there actually is a lot of content that exists around lots of travel and hospitality brands. Um, not all of these are our partners. Actually, most of them aren't, so we're not up here just plugging Olapic customers. Um, and this slide like goes out of date by the minute. Mm -hmm. We updated this slide like an hour ago to update it from 31 million photos to 47 million photos. I don't know the last time you did it, but like 50% increase in the amount of photos with hashtag vacation. And I think we were looking at, at like Airbnb who, who just joined up with Olapic and that number is probably a third on the slide of, of the amount of content that's out there on Instagram right now. Right? Yeah, and just to speak to the slide a little bit, I, I always compare this slide to sort of like the, the deck clock in New York, right? It just keeps ticking and ticking and ticking and ticking. It goes up as we sit here and have this session, right? Within this 35 minute window, there's people out there sharing and showcasing content with these individual brands. So to Andrew's point, it is a bit dated, but again, it, it gets dated in the moment, right? It's always sort of you know, evolving and getting bigger and the volume is increasing. Cool. So. Now you're going to tell me a little bit about like what's not working, okay? Right, like what you've seen and, and why travel and hospitality brands are so excited to talk to us, right? Sure. So this slide, uh, this is like text, right? And to be fair, uh, Olapic wasn't the first, the first technology out there to bring UGC to the shopping or travel booking experience. Like you know, text reviews are UGC, five star reviews are UGC. Uh, we just look at visual content, photos and videos as kind of like UGC 2.0. Um, I imagine you're going to say like a picture is worth a thousand words here. No, I won't use that. <laughs> I think um, another really powerful slide, right? We've seen the shift in, in the way the consumer comes and interacts with the brand, right? They want more visual, authentic content to be immersed in, right? So. Text edit's important, don't get us wrong, but it doesn't do your property justice. It doesn't show real, live, authentic moments on site with your brand, whether you be a cruise line or an airline or a hospitality brand, right? You're not ultimately seeing every part of the moment with that text review, right? You're looking at, you know, this one has um, pet-friendly hotel, an outdoor pool, and, and outdoor parking, but what does that pool really look like? What is it going to feel, and, and what is it going to be like for me when I'm on property and experiencing the moment or on the cruise or with the airline, right? Um, so it's really important that we provide visuals for you know, the customer who is demanding better, more authentic content to sort of understand why your property is really sort of the right choice for their vacation or for their travel. Sure, and so easier to capture moments and experiences yep. visually than like writing an essay and also easier to consume, easier to like see what it's like, right? Exactly right, I can, I can understand and, and see what's going on in a picture faster than I can sort of a, a paragraph of text edit. Sure. Now, this slide I think is funny. It's like these are weird photos. And I couldn't tell if this was the same hotel or different hotel and, and I don't know. So you told me that these are actually not the same hotel, right? Yeah. And you told me your wife books your travel, right? She does. Okay. And so like how would so, she choose? Yeah. So it looks like the presenter view kind of cut off a little bit of the, the, edit, the text edit there. Um, but the room on the left is a $99 room rate, and the room on the right is a $69 room rate. And they're both three-star hotels, right? So Andrew's wife would say, well, I save almost 30 bucks by booking this hotel that looks exactly the same, but maybe Andrew's wife didn't understand that the hotel on the left also offers a continental breakfast and has 
an awesome pool and perhaps is giving away a free spa package, right? You need to find ways to differentiate the brand outside of sort of the boring stock image, right? Find real authentic content that are coming from travelers and use that as a way to differenti differentiate the brand and sort of um, the light of the hotel. You know, the, the, the stock photo isn't doing it justice. And you called this a pain slide? Yeah, so I call like, this a pain slide. So like when you present this to hotel chains, they all kind of grimace and they're like, they recognize this kind of content as stuff that's on their website right now. Yeah, exactly right. The, the, the stock image does not provide any authenticity. So okay. they, they understand that and that pain point. Very cool. Yeah, and just hammering home the point here again, you can differentiate your property and your brand with authentic user generated content, right? Showcase customers on site, on property, on the cruise line, on the airline, you know, in that experience, the kids jumping on the bed and the continental breakfast and, you know, the happy families that live on property and on site resonate with people and make them feel sort of comfortable enough to book a conversion with you, right? They get to your, these, just take a step back for a minute, they get to these pages and they have an option of which sort of where they want to book and what they want to do. And, you know, I sort of, I said it a bit earlier, but the, the traveler jumps from here to TripAdvisor and Oyster and, you know, a third party OTA, OTA to get better pricing, right? So how do you keep them in that funnel? How do you keep them moving down to a point of conversion? And we found that by differentiating with this content, um, it's been really successful. So it all makes sense to me so far, right? Um, there's this concept of like distributed booking funnel. People are looking in a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you need, you need a lot of content. There's also like the strategy of keeping people in your own booking funnel, keeping them on your website. So putting sort of richer uh, content that's more relatable, that, that gives you more information, that's more inspirational or maybe aspirational, keeps people on the site. Uh, we can also distribute content into, into like different channels if we need to, right? Um, ads and... Yeah, so it, it isn't about just creating that and I keep using the words, so I'm sorry, but more authentic moment at the point of purchase, right? It's about getting better lifestyle assets within all of your marketing channels. You want your consumer or your traveler to feel like they're interacting with native content at every single touch point with the brand. So we've worked hard to build some strategic partnerships where we're not only scaling content to property detail pages and brand pages, but we're pushing it to your email outreach and your ads and your catalogs and your billboards, right? The cost, speed, and quality of lifestyle content and tapping into that and using that across channel has been extremely powerful. And some more metrics, right? You know, how it's performing at the point of purchase. Again, just to hammer home the point, we're seeing that the user or the traveler really enjoys touching user-generated content more than they do stock imagery. 70% is more likely to book a trip if they saw a positive, relatable consumer photo. Think about that for a minute. 70% um, if they see a relatable photo that's comfortable. So again, bringing that curated TripAdvisor um, content experience to the, the, the forefront of your channels. Cool. Now. Um, show me or kind of walk me through where you use it because mm -hmm. it's not like we talk about this a lot with our account management kind of strategic services it's not if you build it they will come kind of thing it's not like if you if you sign up with us you're gonna get uh, a ton of really good quality content sure. to put onto your you know put onto all these channels we're talking about there's some strategy that goes into it We've got some learning, some sort of common applications and best practices and stuff like that. Yeah, so it certainly is a two-pronged approach, right? You want to make sure that you're tapping into customer content. You start to, cult or start to harvest those photos and videos and those assets and understand what's on brand and what's usable and what's not. But a lot of the teams that we work with really sort of take a larger approach to this and have what we call a larger marketing push behind promoting this sort of content, right? So what we've done is we've created a system where our brands are basically marketing what we call evergreen hashtags across their customer touch points, right? Whether it be on the dot com, perhaps on a do not disturb sign, on a key card, in ads, again, in billboards or catalogs, they create a customer centric hashtag like hashtag in a Hyatt world or hashtag show me your four seasons or hashtag travel Texas. And what this does is it, is it creates sort of this instructional guide for the end user or the traveler that basically says this is the hashtag that you use to opt into the brand experience. This is the hashtag. If you want to be showcased, if you want to be featured, go ahead and use this hashtag and share it across your social network to kind of be immersed or sort of a part of sort of that, uh, that brand experience. So it's consistent. 
Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, as an Instagram user, only have to learn like one or two hashtags. And it's like, it takes a village. Like the entire marketing team is involved in this social, email, you know, people who are printing and, and yeah. hanging. So, so it certainly depends on the brand and how deep they want to go, right? Of course, we drink the Kool-Aid at Olapix, so we say put hashtags everywhere and you'll get tons of volume of content back for you and your team to monetize. But it is really up to the brand on how they want to market this. But what we have found is that when brands are marketing these evergreen hashtags, eventually, they're, or ultimately, they're getting a high volume of content coming into our system. So it truly is sort of a numbers game in the sense of how much content can you again monetize. And we're seeing brands are averaging about 10 to 15% of the content that's coming into our system. They're coming back and saying, yes, these are sort of approved uh, assets for our brand to use. Right. And that's kind of in my wheelhouse from sort of a product knowledge right. point of view, like across all verticals, not that much content is actually making it to the bottom of the funnel. Right. So you do what you can to increase the amount that goes in at the top, mm -hmm. um, but then you moderate it out, you pick the best in class, you, you go on brand versus off brand, yes. you request rights, all this kind of thing. Certainly not a ma mathematician, but you know, if, if you collect 100,000 photos and you, know, you monetize 20% of that, that's 20,000 photos, right? So ask yourself what it takes or what it costs your brand to create 20,000 lifestyle assets to deploy across your marketing channels an arm and a leg. So uh, we see it as a way of sort of, again, bridging that gap and giving you access to better, more inspirational content. All right, so that's the call to action, and this is kind of the activation part yep. of where we put all this content. Yep. Um, these are all on, like, on a brands.com, right? These are all keeping people in their own yep. booking funnel. Yeah, so live as we speak. So again, back to that point about sort of that customer-centric hashtag, right? In terms of the booking funnel, what we have found, and I hate to hit on the point again, but again, that average traveler jumps around, right? They go to the OTAs or the, the trip advisors or the relevant sites to find, again, that off, sort of authentic review. And what we have found is that by bringing user-generated content to the .com, we basically inspire users to stay in what we call your booking funnel. And we drive users from inspirational, authentic galleries of people showcased in the moment or, or sharing their photo with the brand and ultimately those photos are actionable back to individual property pages. So we take a photo and we take the inspiration of the traveler and we drive them back to the individual property or landing page that you know, you'd like to drive that traveler to from that photo. So it really helps sort of move the user down that booking path. And similar concept for a, a travel review or like a, even a product review with like activewear and apparel. Um, this, is like a, this is like a photo review of uh, that sort of augments right. the rest of the UGC that you're bringing onto right. the site, right? At the right? point of purchase, uh, what is it going to look like? What, was, what am I going to feel like when I'm on property? You know, here are some of the photos that people are sharing, and ultimately you can kind of get a good understanding of, again, sort of the experience by seeing those photos there. Okay. And do you mind walking me through a couple sort of real-life examples, real I'd love to. Olympic customers, yeah, sure. show, us, show us what, what yeah. people are doing? So this is what we're doing with Gate One Travel. A little formatting issue there. Apologize about that. Um, so Gate One was um, or became a customer of Olapix about two years ago. Um, they were collecting content on a one-off basis, so they were reaching out to their Instagram channels and their Facebook channels and finding good content and saying, "Hey, we love your photo. We'd love to feature you." The problem was they were getting a ton of content coming in, but they couldn't find photos that were on brand. And what their thought process was is that they need to reach out to users that have high volume of followers, high volumes of likes a large reach across the social audience. And what we have found is that there is no correlation between the actual reach of a customer and the aesthetic emotional connection that it drives with the traveler, right? It's two totally different things. Um, so they used Olapic and our in-house algorithm, which essentially predicts photo's ability to push sales and engagement upon an end user by predicting the variables of the photo. And they use that algorithm to find better assets to utilize within their channel. So, Gone were the days where they were going off on a one-off basis and looking for that really good asset or that really good user with, with reach. Um, and, and suddenly they were met with sort of um, a, a plethora of content that was sort of predicted to say, these photos are the ones that are going to drive sales and engagement upon your customers. So we increased the amount of their pro approved photos by 2,000% um, and also in increased their, their interaction rate by over 100%. So um, they've been a super cool partner. and. Um, really fun to innovate with. This is a, this is a cool one for me because um, for a couple of reasons. They had the right idea, right? But they didn't have the right tool or like strategy mm -hmm. in the market to do it. 
they were doing this, you said they were like just going out to Instagram and like cherry picking yep. photos and like engaging with people one on one and trying to find the right thing. Uh, but our data science team actually built an algorithm that helped them like bubble up the better best content. content. Exactly okay. right. So it sort of takes away from the arbitrary experience of saying, yes, this is a good photo, no, this is a bad photo, right? And sort of the person who's moderating content, not that we don't love and appreciate that person, but they, they sort of get out of that game of saying, yes, this photo is going to drive a conversion or a sale, or no, it won't. So um, the algorithm has been super powerful in the sense of you know, push it, moving the needle for the brands that we work with. Like a technological assist, right? You can call it that. Something like that. Cool. That um, and this, so this works for sort of like a smaller tour operator, mm -hmm. right? very experience driven, very experience yep. heavy. Um, works for big brands too, right? Yeah, Hyatt was a, a super, fu super fun one to work on and continuing to work on. They've been a, a partner of ours for about three years, so one of our, our early adopters. And again, they were really bought into that centric hashtag approach, right? That hashtag in a Hyatt world. And I wasn't kidding in the sense of you know, saying that you can promote it across channels. Hyatt takes the opportunity to promote it everywhere. It's prominent on their home pages. It's on do not disturb signs or confirmation pages in their advertising outreach. Um, and we also collect content from them, not only from hashtags, but via location tags as well. So if a consumer is on property and they're sharing a photo with a geolocation tag, we actually pull in photos that way as well. Um, and over the past three years, we've scaled photos across all 575 of the property. So if you go to a property detail page um, on one of Hyatt's sites or microsites, you'll see two tabs. One, the, the hotel photos, the, the stock imagery that they promote, and then another tab next to that with a gallery of user-generated photos to, again, inspire the user at the point of purchase. So a really fun one to work on here. So 45,000 photos over a three-year period. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of content created. Yeah. Um, and you, so like, that's almost 600 hotels that we have online that we're collecting mm -hmm. from. Uh, so they leverage like what, like if I'm tagging a photo on Instagram to a Hyatt hotel, it'll, will, old people will just suck it up? Yep, so the same way um, if you're on Instagram and there's a geolocation tag there, we scrape from that geolocation tag, which actually correlates back to a, a Facebook place URL. So it's pretty seamless for us to just scape, scrape that content. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like to think so. Um, and then this last example, I know you wanted to keep, keep this deck a little bit shorter, but I like the Rosewood Hotel Group. Mm -hmm. um, smaller sort of luxury brands. So it kind of works. We've seen it work in tour operators. We've seen it work over major sort of um, major hotel brands, lots of presence. Yeah, and now the, luxury and boutique. Sure. And this is one of those sort of boutique brands where it's really important from a luxury perspective to showcase the property from the light of the traveler, right? There's a beautiful properties, there's beautiful bars and spas and lobbies. You know, how do we sort of differentiate our luxury experience? I think something that was important to the Rosewood team is keeping content fresh on the site as well, right? We start to think of sort of travel as totally different than the, the standard e-commerce experience where you know, you're not just sort of promoting your spring line and getting that con that, those photos live on your site. You know, your, your properties are always changing and evolving. So if you'd like, like to re redo something as small as the bedspreads or the lobby, right, you then have to fly an entire content team to that particular location get that content approved and Photoshopped and what have you and get live on the site. But they utilize sort of user-generated content in Olapic to keep that constant fresh stream of what it will look and feel like when the traveler is going to be there. So there's always sort of real and new content on their site. I think that's a cool concept, sort of outsourcing mm -hmm. your content creation yeah. when things change. Uh, that's, that's it actually for us and it looks like we're right on time, so. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. That was a sure. great presentation. Um, we're going to open the floor up for questions now, so I'll get it started. The first one is, can UGC coexist with brand photos and how? For sure. So this isn't just like a travel question, I guess. Um, it's more of like a, a strategy question. Olipic considers itself a content engine. I'm using all these air quotes because that's like official marketing terms from our CMO. Um, and we want it to house all of the content that you're going to use in sort of all of your channels, uh, including brand-created assets. Um, and that's not just professionally shot stuff that you upload to us in sort of like Dropbox folders. That's also following Hyatt's own Instagram accounts, uh, following uh, you know, the social handles of your employees, following the social handles of your 
ambassadors and your influencers. Mm -hmm. uh, it all lives together. It all has a place. Uh, we are just advocates of like better content. Yeah, Great. If I can caveat off the point quickly, um, a lot of brands that we work with, they want a certain type of content, especially luxury collection brands, right? They want it to feel luxurious and feel like sort of their current content efforts, right? So a lot of the teams that we work with, what they do is they intermix good user-generated content with branded and paid content, and they deploy that live to their customers. What it does is it sort of creates this sort of visual guide of what type of content the brand is looking for. And as a result, the traveler goes ahead and sort of shares content with that moment. I know it's not travel related, but one awesome example of that is what we've done with um, the coach team um, over there in terms of th they've pushed branded and paid content and kind of gave the, the user an idea of uh, sort of what type of content and photos they were looking for. Awesome, thank you. Are there any questions on the floor? Uh, so on your pain slide uh, with the uh, with the hotel rooms, uh, you pointed out that uh, the only way you knew that this hotel was better was because there was content that was not visual content that told you uh, about other amenities. Uh, is there any kind of a rule of thumb for a balance between visual content and and textual, factual content? Yeah, good question. Certainly depends on sort of the brand approach, right? I think. Everyone is looking for ways to become more visual. You know, it, it sort of goes back to that point with the rise of mobile millennial and sort of Instagram and social networks. We're all looking at visual content more than we are text edit. So I think there will, there will always be a place for text edit on, on property detail pages, but I think brands now are really looking for ways to optimize that property detail or, or booking detail page experience. And we have found that by installing visual, visual marketing or user-generated content there, um, the, the conversion rates are higher. So um, I think there's, again, always a world for, for text edit, and I think, um, but the visual content is, is performing better. All right, thank you guys so much. Everybody, uh, we thank Adam and Andrew both from Olapic. Bye, guys. Thank you.